Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast number 247. 247, yes. Um, from Pittsburgh, PA, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. We're talking geeky things all night long with some geeky people. That's not that's not an insult, I hope. Not on this show. Certainly not on this show. Mm-mm. Uh, with me, one of them geeky people coming from us, uh, coming to us, geez, from Studio B is Chilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Is John Chilla? How's it going? We need we need to figure out some cool way to market a like green screen background thing. So like every time I can be in like a different location, and we'll just call it Studio B. It is possible. It is absolutely possible. We can look into that webcam software. It does some some crude uh, stuff. We can install install Wirecast for you. It does it all built in. Uh, so I mean, it, it, this is absolutely possible. For you, and, and I think that I think that would be an interesting, a whole show in itself of how to do something like that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I, I digress. And um, also, finally, um, um, from the uh, shackles of school and homework is Dutters. I'm a person again. You're a person again. <laughs> and congratulations, just running the Pittsburgh Marathon. You have more gusto than I do. That's for sure. It was only a relay leg, but it was six point some miles up Forbes, so I get points for that, right? Yes. <laughs> And 27 people just watch me eat pizza on Periscope. <laughs> this is how we celebrate. Right? Happy Zingo de Mayo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, the Periscope experiment continues. I just talking about how, you know, I, I do a fairly serious uh, uh, podcast with my clients on Mondays uh, about behavioral therapy and everything. And uh, we're talking about aging and negative thoughts. And somebody popped into Periscope because I'm like, well, let's let's put them on here. At least we have a live feed, right? Because Hangout wasn't getting any traction. And I uh, wanted better quality. And uh, somebody just got in and says, like, a vampires. The answer is becoming a vampire. And it started just listing all the problems with being a vampire versus all the problems we were listing. <laughs> so uh, we're getting some very interesting people on Periscope. But anyways, you can join us not on Periscope. We're actually on live.awesomecast.net. Uh, you can join us live every seven p- every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And again, jump in the chat room. Help us out. Uh, uh, let us know your thoughts on the stories that we're talking about. And then suggest some ones that are like, hey, let me know what your awesome thing of the week or anything like that is. And you can also join us. We're here. At, uh, we're at awesomecast.net. There's all kinds of shows there's many awesome casts we're doing four days a week we had the brand new awesome chat that premiered last week with the jag off john chamberlain we had an extended conversation with him about what he's doing about the, the blog how it's come up all kinds of stuff we have another guest this week um one of the co-organizers for tedx pittsburgh and we're actually scheduled scheduled to talk with uh one of the guys over at uh, runbunter.com and clamor uh scheduled this week uh, for the upcoming weeks, of course. Uh, keep an eye on that. I've been periscoping during those interviews uh, for those interested, uh, especially the ones that are here in the studio. Um, so uh, you can kind of chime in that way. And a lot of people have, and, and I really appreciate the people that have jumped in on those uh, while we've been doing them. Um, and also, please uh, check us out. We're at AwesomeCast on, on Twitter. Uh, we have a great AwesomeCast group and page over on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. And please subscribe to us on, on YouTube, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, uh, iHeartRadio. If we're not where you're finding your audio and video, please let us know and we'll get it there. Um, archive.org. We're on there too. <laughs> In a little bit on Daily Motion. Uh, trying to just spread it everywhere we can. Excuse me, every, everywhere we can. So let's get right into our awesome things of the week. Chilla, what do you got this week? What do I have this week? Um, so my thing is it's actually an iPhone case, but uh-huh. unlike any iPhone case, this case will turn wasted radio frequency in back into power for what? your phone. So it can it can harvest the energy from radio frequencies like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LTE, and turn it back into DC power. Mm-hmm. Um, this giving you thirty percent longer battery life. Um, they're claiming on the on the iPhone six. Um, I'm guessing it would be probably a little less on the, on the six plus. Um, this being said, I've always wondered why there haven't been cases that can reuse power to, from other sources, um, to then thus charge or, or add longevity to the battery on the existing devices. I've always thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a back plate? or an entire phone that was pretty much made out of some kind of 
solar recharger type device, but I'm guessing that they can't get enough power off of there to, to really charge back up the device. But this, that being said, this is actually taking radio frequency from around you and from the device and, and converting that back, like I said, into electricity to charge the device. Um, it's actually Ohio State University um, is one of the partners in this, um, and it's going to launch on Kickstarter for about 100 bucks. Um, so the one question I had, and I can't seem to find an answer to it, is if your phone completely dies, can it can it sip the electricity from other surrounding devices or Wi-Fi routers or whatever? So this when is you think about sitting sitting in Starbucks or something like that. This is like the phone version of the parasite from Superman. Yes, to me, <laughs> um, it, it seems very sci-fi that this is something that they can do. Uh, and it, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's. I mean, when you look at this, they, they, they started announcing, and then you have. Um, Elon Musk's uh, battery that he wants to put in your house. I mean, it just goes to show that th there's a lot of there's a lot of energy out there that if we harness it, could, that can be used for good versus just going to waste. I know there's uh, there's actually a company locally. Um, I think they might be through Project Olympus or Alpha Lab, actually called Soul Power, and they're trying to harness the power that you generate while you walk from via your shoes to to <laughs> generate power. Um, yeah. I I've seen devices from your shoes. I've seen devices that it's some kind of like leg brace. I've seen stuff that you can throw on a bike. Um, so, so, and someone actually at work was asking me, you know, I'd really like something for I, when I row in my um, kayak. Yeah. I wish that I could take that energy and, and put it back into some kind of rechargeable battery. So I'm sure that, that, the concept is is rather limitless it's just how do you take that motion or whatnot and then convert that back into some kind of dc power could you imagine if someone could figure out a way to harness like this movement and anything with your thumb and turn it back into power i wonder i mean yeah i'm especially sure thumbs. I, it, especially if you can do it via the screen on the phone to mm -hmm. kind of how what you're talking about how i don't see how much power could you generate from just the tapping I do on WWE Immortals and Mortal Kombat? You know, I mean, I think it would be ridiculous, you know. So or, I, or the heat the heat that's created by your hands holding the device. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I always feel bad at the thumping on my phone, like when I'm, I'm you know, when, when, when Missy's trying to go to sleep next to me. And I'm just like, <laughs> what? I'm trying to be Triple H, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, and actually, um, and actually... <laughs> <laughs> Juggalo John sent us a story a while back, and I think we had some guests. I think it's when we had the doctor on, who by the way I ran into over the weekend. Um, uh, uh, and, and there was there was something similar that's a kinetic energy regenerator, but it was from the I think it was called the Wank Band, which is apparently is um, um, cursed out in our chat room. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> approximating that. Um, but it, but yeah, it was like something that like was that motion generation thing from apparently uh, wanking um, and uh, and 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 generating power in some fashion so there you go john we finally got around to the story <laughs> so, <laughs> um in, in some fashion here so um but uh but no no i think it is really interesting especially with the story with elon musk and the battery and i, I do want to talk about the battery here a little bit later in the show as well so um awesome dutters what do you got this week hi i got uh well as you may know or some of you may know this is this is my buddy um this ooh. is my ooh, my nikon uh d3300 very nice, very kite. Nice. It's my Tamron oh. lens. Very pretty, very pretty. Um, something I just um, I'm taking. I took a digital photography class, a digital photo editing class, and I became um, my final project. I put myself in front of the camera for it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, it, there's no real way to take a selfie with this. If you, well, you could do a timer, and there's a few other different sneaky, you know, not so great ways to do it. Um, I was visiting my friends over at uh, YM Camera, which is out in Boardman, Ohio, which I absolutely love those guys over there. They take such good care of me. Uh, this is a Nikon. It's a wireless adapter. Uh, it's a WU11 or WU1. It's like this little teeny little teeny tiny guy. And uh, what it does is it plugs in to the side here. And, and it transmits, once you set it up, it transmits a wireless signal. So essentially, I go off my regular Wi-Fi and go into um, the Wi-Fi that my camera is now using. Doo -doo -doo. All right. And what it does is essentially connects my phone and my camera. Give it one second. 
and I go into the Nikon app, wireless mo mobility app. Yeah, sorry, it's kind of hard to see there. And I can take photographs. And you can actually, like, you take the photograph from a button on your phone. Yes. That's awesome. And you can see the viewfinder, correct, mm -hmm. too? So yeah. you can see what, this yeah, is... you can see what the camera is seeing. Okay. Hello. Mm -hmm. But, it, but it's, it's, it's not, your the camera isn't mm -hmm. connected to Sorg's Wi-Fi. It's creating its own Wi-Fi network, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I can take a photo from here. And any, I probably heard it <laughs> click. Um, any photos you take from here are now on my phone also. So they drop, do they drop right into the camera roll? Yeah, right into the camera roll. That's awesome. And then I can also view any of the photos that are on, just like the top button there. It allows me to view any of the photos on the card on my my camera. Because a lot of times, you know, you, I may be out taking photos with this guy and to get this, you know, what's on the information on the card, it, is kind, it can be kind of a pain, um, especially if you don't have a computer nearby. But this way I can wirelessly connect these guys and then I have, the it's now in my camera roll on my phone so I can Instagram it. I could post it on Facebook. And actually you, you have been, right? I thought I've noticed some of them come up, right? No, I haven't. Oh, you yet. haven't done it Well, yet? just the only one that, that has been was um, the ones that I did from that last shoot. Okay. And, um, but that's it. And I absolutely, I love this thing. Is that, is that from, is that from you with the, the lawnmower, lawnmower and the oh, yeah. dress? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> go check out her, her toy. What, what's your Instagram if you'd like to show? Oh, Kate Marie PGH. Yes. <laughs> go check that out. There's a, I'll see if I can pull it up here. So, so this is, this is a pretty cool little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw when I looked on the Nikon website for it, there's it's kind of gotten it's only got like what two two and a half, three stars maybe. And I started reading I always like the negative reviews first, and mm -hmm. it seems like most of the issues are PC and Android related. I connected it to my tablet, my uh, my Samsung note here, and and I've connected it to my iPhone. I when I had it connected to my iPhone, I was able to go in our attic. So there's an attic upstairs, um, like main floor and basement. Uh, we had the camera in the basement, and I was taking pictures with it in the attic on my phone. Oh, wow. Uh, when I had it connected to my tablet, I got from one floor to the other floor, and it disconnected. So I don't it, – it's obviously more the app on the – I'm thinking more than it is the actual device itself. Mm -hmm. And Because, um, like I said, I've, I've noticed in it, – it's a lot – the lag on <laughs> – there's me! <laughs> in case you ever wanted to see somebody cut uh, grass in a um, – a very fancy dress and yellow gloves. And your bare feet. <laughs> no, I'm wearing heels. Oh, is it heels? Okay, mm -hmm. it looks like a, it looks like a foot. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of nude heels, but they're they're definitely heels on there. Uh, it was a final project for me. Um, my my topic was uh, moving in with Prince Charming isn't all it's cracked up to be, <laughs> and I'm still maintaining a princess. There's a whole solid series of me picking up socks and um, doing dishes, and <laughs> but all the while wearing my very fancy princess dress. But yeah, I, I took um, all the photos with with this. Um, it's nice because you can go, you can set all the kit settings up. That that's the one pain I will. Con it's kind of a pain is you do have to disconnect the wireless from my phone and my camera in order to adjust any of the settings on here. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of preset the you know preset things up, and then you can take pictures. It will auto focus too, which is cool, I think. Um, but if you need to change your locale, you have to disconnect, then reconnect after you set everything back up. Awesome. But I, I, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I have a lot of fun playing with it. Uh, it's it's easier to take pictures of animals with it because you could just set the camera down by them and they're like, oh, what's this? As opposed to you being behind it because I was able to take better pictures with my cat with it. <laughs> Zoo doesn't like better cat photos. <laughs> <laughs> Already getting your, your worth out of it, right? Oh, gosh, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it was only, I think it was like 60 bucks. And like I said, I've had a lot of fun with it and you can kind of be sneaky with it too. Mm -hmm. You got a link there on uh, NikonUSA.com actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, fifty nine ninety five. You want to check that out? That's not bad for what what you get out of that. I mm -hmm. think so. Awesome. That's fun to like. Yeah, I was just trying to find if they have one because I'm I have a lot of Canon equipment. Okay. And I can't find I can't seem to find the same type of thing. <laughs> Somebody's gonna have to switch. No, <laughs> no I have way too many yeah. lenses. <laughs> Which that's no. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a, I got a freebie. Um, so this is a Chrome extension, and I, I actually turned it off because I got really weirded out because I realized I work a lot, so I'm not necessarily going to happy websites. Um, I don't know how much I smile while I'm working, no matter how much I'm liking it. Uh, but uh, there's this Chrome extension, and and I love the, the title. This is what caught my attention over here on Engadget. Was, uh, this is a Chrome extension taught me to love the Internet again. So uh, this is... Uh, 
well, geez, I can't remember. Smile, Smile Suggest actually is the name of it. So you can find it on the Chrome uh, extension store and everything. And it does turn on your camera. So be wary of that if you like to surf the internet naked or something. Um, but it will actually, you send it to say, okay, this is a smile. So you actually, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, cure it, you know, uh, 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 do the thing. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, so it knows what a smile is, what a 10 smile is, what, what the biggest smile you have is. And as you go, it, it rates how much you're smiling as you visit websites. And it will take that information and suggest websites for you hmm. based on your facial emotion at this point. Um, I thought it was a really interesting idea. Again, you know, if you're not too crazy about your camera turning on just while you're surfing on the internet, some of you will smile more than, than other websites you know so um you know speaking of the wank band earlier for instance uh but uh you know uh so so i, I you know that i think it's an interesting technology an inter interesting interesting way to use uh facial technology for just surfing the web you know um again worried about the security but kind of a fun thing to try out maybe for a few days and, and see how you like it so I, I would definitely be interested in this it, it, it like turning it on and turning it off throughout the day, especially because one of the first, one of the things I probably do right after dinner, after I get home is I have a list of about, I would say 15 tech blogs and probably about four photography sites that I hit. Mm -hmm. um, if it could help curate and send me to the articles that I would want to read first in case I don't, because, because a lot of times by, I never get through the entire, my entire list. Um, that's where I could see if it could somehow prioritize them and shuffle them. So I could hit the ones that it thinks that I would want to read first. And then I could kind of go back through and skip all those. Right. And then pick up anything else that it may not have picked up on and it could learn over time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely interested in trying this out. Yeah, it's, it's a Chrome so it's a Chrome extension, so I can use it in Chrome, but I can't use it with any of my other browsers, which that's okay. Um, it's just I tend to read on my tablet, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Yeah, it's not going to help you. Like I, I use a lot of my reading on Feedly on my on the iPad actually. Yeah, morning. and um, when I'm picking up stories for the morning shows, for instance, so that wouldn't help me. And that's like that, that is the time when I'm actually into what's going on and just just reading kind of casually right uh mm -hmm. usually is on that tablet kind of situation so i mean it's not going to fit for how everybody's using their internet um but i think there's there's a lot of people that could you know kind of get some fun out of this thing so mm -hmm. um what do you think of this katie <laughs> i'm always i i don't know like it's i'm pretty comfortable with my electronics but i always have that fear of when's my phone gonna when's the camera gonna click I always, on? like i always have this like I, I sometimes i sit in a room and realize like even now i can kind of look around and say how many cameras yeah. are pointed at me right now you know and if you believe in the whole nsa thing you know mm -hmm. <laughs> that they can that they could do that you know it's like well they got they just got everything anyways you know what i mean um so well i think this also feeds into your other story that you asked us about this morning kind of a, a similar feel to it it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as much as um the uh periscope comcast thing yeah now this was a thing where uh this was on the uh mini awesome cast where um comcast is is basically has an app that will live stream to your xfinity x1 home entertainment whatever box or somebody else's box like grandma's or something like that um so anyway how are you connecting that then um i think it's for is, is what we're sending and how we're sending and is is when is it is it always i don't, I don't know like I, I have certain companies i do not feel comfortable with having some certain things and certain permissions comcast like yeah. I, don't, I don't want comcast to have a camera in my home <laughs> yeah i don't I, know I, how i feel about microsoft to have a camera pointed at me in my living room you, you wonder you wonder if it if it's in somewhere in there like um licensing agreement where anything that's recorded and broadcasted through their their service then becomes their property actually there was um, there was a little bit of something I can't remember if it was Siri or Connect, but there's something about the usage of phrases that it picks up from the microphone because I think it does like kind of randomly listen, you know, mm -hmm. or listen before and after you've actually said the thing that triggers it a little bit. Um, or it's always listening to the "Hey Siri" or the uh, or Xbox, you know, Go Xbox or whatever the heck the thing is, you know. Um, so I think that's a concern. Certainly, we, we have microphones all over the place. We have, you know. Uh, you know, just you know, regular day to day, day to day people have have two cameras and a microphone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
in their pocket all the time pointed at who knows what, you know, how many, yeah, I'm not getting into that. Well, you, there might be, I know we've talked about the wearable technology and how much information that, um, it collects, I mean, it aggregates, even though it's not specific to you, mm-hmm. it's still collecting data on you know they're not supposed to be able to identify it you but is it the same kind of I, i'd have to look at the uh see i'm i'm thrown on that because there's a study where they took a lot of anonymized data mm-hmm. and they could still narrow most of it down to individual people because just this this and this and this well obviously it's this person you mm-hmm. know it's like when you throw in so many variables it's like a fingerprint after so often and they're like well of course it's this person you know um well, the dedu- deductive reasoning kind of wins out in this one mm-hmm. so what? I think that has to be very targeted, but but mm-hmm. my concern is is someone's personal video then going to spawn and influence some kind of reality TV show that then Comcast <laughs> reaps all the money mm-hmm. from. Meanwhile, it was someone else's idea. Right, 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 that, right. That they actually, and and that's one thing that, and I'm not sure. I, I know IBM. I think has changed their their kind of working agreement with its employees. But one of their things was that if you patented it, it used to be if you patented it, anything while you worked with for IBM, it actually became IBM's patent, whether Wasn't you worked this... on it during core working hours or on the weekend. Um, so, and, and I've, 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 I've heard rumblings of, depending on how you read Google's agreements for their pub, public google docs not not the business version but the public versions that technically anything that you type at one point in time it could have been interpreted that anything you stored in google docs that became property of google oh, no. um, so if you took a movie script or you took anything and put it that list of google, uh passwords for my client yeah <laughs> wouldn't have but it, it yeah, but it's not that that concerns me. It's the intellectual property. Intellectual, yeah, okay. Where, okay. where I'm, I'm creating something and all of my notes and my code snippets and my documents and are all my, all my, all my scripts, Docs. all my show pitches, uh, they're all hey, in there. All my photographs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And then Google, Google then takes Katie's pictures and uses them in all their advertising and mm-hmm. takes your show pitches and goes and creates three, four YouTube shows off of it and takes all my code and goes and creates a mobile app. And that's where, that's where it concerns me that all this, I, all these ideas and these concepts that someone's trying to then make money off of, they beat you to it because they have, I mean, think about it, searching Google, Google own search. So I'm sure they can co- pretty quickly figure out a way to search all of the users Google Drive space to find information that they're looking for that could potentially shortcut something that they're trying to build. Um, that that's where this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not as nervous that the the NSA wants to see what I'm doing in the evening. Uh, it's not that interesting, right? I'm I'm sitting on the couch probably watching Agents of Shield and and reading my iPad. It's 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 quite boring, but. Where, where I'm worried about is the intellectual property or something that I'm doing that I could then later make money off of. Could they beat me to the chase? Right, right. I feel like this is, if this is something that would happen it, or it does happen, I think you, you would have heard about it by now. Right. I, I think in practice this doesn't happen. And, and when it does change, that's, uh, that's going to change, much like the NSA security stuff, right? So, yeah. well, let's go on to something a little... Safer. Uh, uh, how about broadcasting your 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 iPhone to devices? Um, <laughs> uh, what's going? On? What 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 are we talking about here, Sheila? So I, I think I've covered uh, uh, products like ScreenFlow and Reflector in the past. Reflector probably about two weeks ago came out with a new version, Reflector Two, um, and Reflector is made by Air Squirrels. So AirSquirrels.com for all your for all your uh, Air Parrot and Reflector and a, and a bunch of other product needs. And they also have Slingshot, which I haven't even ever looked at Slingshot. But anyway, um, or no, we talked. You talked about the Slingshot on the show before. But anyway, I did. Um, Reflector is the ability to screencast, and it used to be an iPad to your computer screen or an iPhone, and they, they have some 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 recording tools. Um, one of the things that I've been looking for is the ability to record an Android screen. Um, which, if you're familiar with Android and Lollipop, uh, Lollipop 
has now has Chromecasting built into it um, for the most part, especially when you're on a Nexus build. Um, but this actually will let you screencast multiple operating systems. And I actually use this for something for work where I actually brought up an iPhone, an iPad, and an Android screen all simultaneously up on my screen. And then I screen shared my screen across WebEx, if you're familiar with any kind of screen sharing technology. And then I showed the same workflow on, on the same app across all three devices and, and we're, we're actually showing someone, look, your, your, site, your website breaks during these instances, but only on these devices. Um, I, I've used this kind of tool for recording demos and recording tutorials. Um, the, the thing that to me that's huge for this is they seem to be the first one right now that's doing Chromecast recording. So like I said, anything from Android, and they, they, I also noticed they also do um, Chromecast from a Chromebook. Um, so I, to me, this is this is a huge, huge deal for me. They also have kind of ex expanded into um, Fire TV and Fire TV Stick capabilities, as well as there's an app that kind of lets you kind of remote control, they call it director, reflector director. It's a, it's a companion app for iOS that kind of lets you control what's being displayed and, and connect and disconnect other, other items from the, from the machine that's actually doing the uh, presentation. Hmm. It's interesting. Now I have the first one because I think you brought this up to me in the past. Um, and, and, and it's always been wonky because the way the Wi-Fi is down here, like my Wi-Fi in the studio is actually different than the internet that all you guys are on, and any other Wi-Fi is on is uh, two floors away, so it's too. I was actually trying to do a little bit now and throw it on that Wi-Fi, and it's just it's too weak to do anything. Um, mm -hmm. So we haven't. I wanted to use it to kind of show off stuff here, so there's just a logistical problem doing it here in the studio. But I actually got to use it last Thursday. I did a how to do a how to video. I know, right? Mm -hmm. um, where we shot a, a how-to for this juicing, this, uh, uh, this place called uh, Fresh from the Farm Juices up in Wexford, actually. And uh, we shot it on iPhones, and, and then it crashed, and I had to shoot it again. Um, so that was a new experience for me. Uh, but I wanted to load it onto the iPad, and much like I did that robot video in San Francisco when I only brought iDevices and tablets and stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to show them how to do it, wanted a bigger screen, so I reflectored it to my um 15 inch uh macbook and turned that around so people could see what i'm working on as i'm doing it it worked beautifully you know of course playing video and everything it got a little choppy it's going to but people had an idea of what i was doing and um and i thought it worked out really well for that for that situation um so uh, i don't know if i would jump into a license for a new version i don't know if there's enough bells and whistles that i would use to do that but uh if you haven't yet i, I jump on this it's only 15 dollars for a single license for a mac or a pc um and that was the thing i think originally it was mac only wasn't it it was mac only that it did right it was mac and ios only now it they have a windows version they it does android i think they're dipping their toe in um the capability to actually mirror a windows device a windows phone as well um so, so that's where I, I feel like if you are any kind of developer trying to sell your app or promote your app mm -hmm. um, and you're doing demos to someone that's going to potentially buy your app in mass quantity, um, whether it be Android, iOS, whatever, to me this is, this is the number one app for doing that. There's some, there's some other competitors that, that they, they seem to – to try to catch up to and then reflector quickly leapfrogs all of the capabilities plus like air server um, I've used, but uh, to your point, 1499 um, and it's through the lifetime of the version. So mm -hmm. I think reflector one was around for, I think two or three years. Um, and I don't think that goes away. I can still, I'm pretty sure I can still use that reflector one as long as I want to. Yes, you can, so. you can use Reflector 1 as long as you want to, and you should get a 33%, um, I think, off the upgrade. So you should get it for like 10 bucks instead of $15. Bucks. Um, if you would want to upgrade, like I said, it's nice if, you, if you're trying to mirror something on Android, especially like your Nexus 7 device, and, you're not, and you don't have your Chrome stick, and you're not trying to do it to a TV if you're trying to do it to a computer to then reshare. Um, that's where I definitely find it valuable. 
Certainly. So go check it out, airsquirrels.com, and they have that. And uh, all the other stuff they have over there at Air Squirrels that we were discussing as well. Uh, Air Paris Slingshot. Slingshot. Did I talk about Slingshot? Yeah, I think you talked about Slingshot. It, 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 it's kind of like a app that lets you collaborate and share a calendar and do video conferencing. I this and... was me, but maybe somebody else brought it up. But now I'm kind of interested. <laughs> <laughs> it lets you document, share, note, take, and it, it kind of lets you... I need a regular team. I have, I have a videography yeah, I a team. team. I don't really have a... you know. I guess we could do this. That's something we could do with the... Uh, I don't know. This this sounds like a kind of thing that's more for our business. It's probably priced as such, not for our podcast. I think it's meant for small business, and it's yeah. priced as such. And I think it's a subscription thing, too, where you're, you're paying some kind of ongoing fee. Sorry, I was trying to catch her making a funny face to her <laughs> camera. Are you periscoping again over there? No, I was... Uh... Snapchatting. <laughs> Fantastic. All, all, kinds of everybody. Media, all kinds of media happening over here. So, um, multiple streams. I'm Come not on. eating anything. No one wants to watch me. <laughs> Um, uh, speaking of eating, hey, you can advertise this one since you were periscoping this and got I can't 25 reach people. It. You can't reach it. I'll, I'll get you. Tell them who is the sponsor. Ooh, 3D. Who, who do we enjoy every week here on the Awesome Cast? I don't know. Who do we? It's our friend Slice on Broadway. <laughs> Slice on Broadway.com. They're here in Beachview along the tracks right there on Broadway Avenue. You hear the rustle of the pizza box. There you go. <laughs> Um, a delicious pizza uh, helping out and uh, feeding our, our guests that come here in the dinner hour for the awesome cast the rambling movie minute yes, I'm just going to leave it on you eating the pizza that's that's you're, you're kind of like Periscope and Hurley you're, you're the pizza showgirl right now oh yeah <laughs> so, um, welcome to Dutter's Eats Pizza Cast uh, but no go check them out they're uh, recognized by the city of Pittsburgh yeah, slice on Broadway day are you looking at the TV of you well, eating pizza I'm a little fuzzy over here I wasn't sure if I was fuzzy. oh no yeah don't worry about that okay um, I was like what happened to me <laughs> I was so much prettier earlier <laughs> on Periscope of all things right <laughs> um, but no go check them out at PGH underscore slice on the Twitters as well as P- slice on Broadway Ooh. on Facebook and Instagram <laughs> you will get hungry like I am right now because um, <laughs> I point at pizza with pizza <laughs> you point at pizza it's not just an eating device it's also a pointing tool there I would like go. to connect to my camera with my pizza thank you to them for supporting uh, the show for so long <laughs> I got to settle with the pizza down there. Where'd you put it? Nowhere. It just disappeared off camera in my my view behind the IMAX. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's get into some more stuff. Hey, let's touch on. Um, I guess the big news is uh, Elon Musk. You mentioned him earlier, um, and Chile. I know you got to be following the story pretty closely. So I'll be honest with you. I think you you started to bring it up last week, and I had not heard about it yet. I think it was not um, it was not released yet. I don't think okay. they didn't announce it until like Thursday night at like 8.30 p.m. Pacific time, 11.30 hour time. I actually got to listen to uh, apparently, um, you know, we always say Elon Musk is the Tony Stark, a real life Tony Stark in, in our age. Um, mm-hmm. And I can see it. You know, um, there was a, a, some really good commentary on uh, This Week in Tech about like, hey, this is like the real guys getting out of this comfort zone. And this wasn't a, hey, we have this product we want to sell you. It's a, hey, we want to fix the world. You know, right, and, and and I think that's that's the thing to take away from this is it it wasn't necessarily a sales pitch per se. It was, no. uh, and and I didn't even get it when I first read some of the news articles. And I don't know if it's because other people that was were trying to write about what was said didn't get it either. Um, but to 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 your point is that it, we're trying to solve the the world's problem of renewable resources as well as pollution and, and i'll let you continue and i'll interject as as we go right along. right so basically what it is to break it down it's this beautiful device <laughs> if i can johnny eyes this for a moment <laughs> um but it, no it, it, it's just, it looks like a backpack that goes on your wall it says tesla it's pretty sweet mm-hmm. i don't know if you can see it. it looks like it's pretty blown up on my, my monitor i'm not sure about that um but uh it's the tesla part oh it comes in red and blue oh boy it, it, it is stylish you gotta give it that mm-hmm. but uh this thing it it it, it starts at around three thousand dollars and <laughs> your pizza crunching <laughs> sorry <laughs> turn her down um <laughs> So it starts at about three thousand uh, dollars for a seven kilowatt hour, thirty five hundred for a ten kilowatt hour, and that's that's the initial for installers to buy. You you will probably have to go through an installer to do the proper thing because this has to be hooked up to your house's electrical system. 
You know, this is like installing an electrical box. You probably want somebody that knows what they're doing to do this. But still, not a bad rate for something like that. Um, really good if you have solar power, if you have panels on your roof, and, you know, it will store that power that you made through the day and get you through the night. Or if you're not even doing that, um, you can stave up the power. It's a backup. Instead of having a generator, it'll last you a few hours in, in the event of a power outage. Uh, I was hearing a lot of stories about people with um, um, wells and, and, uh, and, and, and septic systems that are electric. And yep. uh, this would help. Yep. My, my dad has that, that problem. So when he loses power, um, he can no longer pump water um, or, and, and really flush the toilet. I, I had the same problem point. growing septic, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the septic system goes up. And I, I think one of the things that I've learned, and I don't think in our region this is big, as, as big of a deal, um, but having a nest in the house, Yes, and it, it talks about like you actually program in your zip code and it figures out who your power companies are because in areas like California and in certain other regions um, there's actually a rush hour for electricity right um, so depending on when you consume your electricity the price actually fluctuates throughout the day um, so in those regions you could actually at 2 a.m tell this thing, hey, charge up because energy is cheap right now and supplement my consumption tomorrow at two o'clock in the afternoon when prices are higher. Um, so, so that's where I could, I could really see it being a benefit, not just in the, hey, um, what, what happens when my power goes out? It's, hey, how can I charge this up? And it, I've heard different people saying how big it, big it is or the size it is. From the pictures I've seen, it's Imagine the surface area of the front of your refrigerator and make it like three slice on Broadway boxes deep. So instead of being your refrigerator, that's what they're not just a sponsor, great. they're a <laughs> measuring device, apparently. Pointing and measuring device. Uh, there you go. So many. So, you, didn't, so, you didn't expect we get this much out of pizza. <laughs> yeah, so, so imagine your, your, your refrigerator, but instead of being, I don't know, what is it, three feet deep? It's like three pizza boxes deep and, and you can mount it anywhere. Right, right. I, I mean, imagine uh, you can probably localize it a little bit, but um, I imagine that, I mean, it's probably going to go in your basement right next to your power, wherever power comes in and everything. And, and that's probably about it, you know, or it's going to be out there where you charge your car. I don't know. Actually, that's, it does actually look pretty big. See, they're seeing it next to a car there in, in, in that case. I just like all the screens, like all the... <laughs> Oh, everybody's yeah, periscoping everyone taking pictures oh yeah all, yeah everybody's periscoping the video <laughs> that's happening on here <laughs> So, um, but no, I think it's very interesting. I, and, and this could be uh, some really interesting demonstrations of uh, this square, which looks like the top uh, panhandle of, uh, of Texas, like that much solar, that much area filled with solar panels, which is the same or could be the same as just us putting solar panels on all of our rooftops. You know, they're absorbing heat anyways, right? Um, could solve a lot of the problems. Which is interesting. And then I heard about how, um, you know, the large percentage of fossil fuel usage is actually the shipping container boats that are going to be out there anyways. So, but that was a whole other discussion about tubes. Um, but anyways, uh, but no, I, I think... I think it's very interesting, and to see something like this, and something that's come out of the research they've done for Tesla, that's not just fancy cars that none of us can afford. And oh, totally. It, it seems like he, much like you were comparing him to Tony Stark, is it, obviously he wants to try to make a buck, but um, in some cases, in some cases, he's been on the verge of going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, he seems to really want to make a difference. He does. It's it's not just about the profit margin and, and and whatnot it's about you know how how can i better mankind which you don't necessarily hear when a lot of ceos get up i mean obviously sasha nadella and whomever get up on stage and they buy our product your your life's gonna you're better off with our product but to me it's more of a look at what we can do and together we can better mankind tomorrow mm-hmm I mean, imagine if you didn't have, imagine if your electricity bill went away by the time in our lifetime, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what they're kind of talking about. 
in a lot of interoperative because you kind of think like well then the electric company will like lose money or whatever but they're actually kind of subsidizing this and that this could kind of replace or at least help parts of the grid especially the california kind of situations with layup browns and everything certainly yeah and, and i don't think this is going to be something that everyone's going to have and that like i said probably even in our lifetime probably not everyone's going to have them but if you did have them i i've i've heard of people and and, and our area is probably the perfect example. You're probably not going to be able to generate. You're going to need a lot of solar panel to generate enough power for for our houses around here with all the tech we have running, um, and and the number of overcast days and everything else. Mm-hmm. But to your point, there's other areas in the country that can then and and I know people where they actually get a check back from the power company because they're not only generating enough power for themselves, but then they're putting power back onto the grid. So they're actually selling electricity that they've generated at their house above and beyond what they use. I think of, we, we have a, we have a camp out in, in out East. This would be the perfect thing. I mean, we're not, we're, you're talking more power and power three lamps and a radio and, and maybe a, a TV one hour a day. Um, this would be like the perfect type of technology for us at, at that at that kind of cottage type place. Mm-hmm. Deb, does you have any thoughts on this before we move on? Um, not that anything you guys have been covered because I just I love the idea of any sort of alternative fuel source for yeah fuel source beyond um, depending on electric um, fossil fuels. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. anything to move forward, right? Yeah, and um, but I. I Am I just like in some sort of bitter place today where I'm like, well, they'll find a way to make their money somewhere else. Then. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at today. Everything's like bitter corporations. I don't know why. Sorry. The, the one question that I, that I didn't see, or maybe I, I didn't read enough um, was, so obviously it's a, it's a big battery, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's storing up this electricity and typically batteries only get, are only good for so many charges. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what's the lifespan? I, I did see a conversation about what it would be depending on um, where you had it temperature wise. Cause it talked about operating. And if you're like, you know, if you're in Minnesota or if you're in the desert, you know, it, you know, this could last 10 years, but it might end up lasting five because of the weather you're under, you know, if, you, okay. if it's outside, say, right. Um, but, um, I, I feel like this is something that doesn't necessarily need to be outside. I think it could be in an inside basement area perhaps. Um, but maybe I'm reading that wrong as well. No, no, no. I, I think, I think it can be, I think when they, what you're talking about is they're talking about using it to charge up their car or whatnot. I, I guess I'm just looking at it as at the price point right now, I think it's like three grand. Mm-hmm. So three grand is going to get you 10 years. Mm-hmm. You, you got to get some kind of return on it. Plus installation. It. Plus installation. Is that long enough. How much are they going to charge for the installation service? Right. So, and you, you never know. I mean, this is not something that, I, I don't think this is something that right away, I, I think as homeowners not doing too bad, you could do something like this. Um, but you know, also, hey, you could get something like this and not, you know, have to be in California to have a Tesla, you know, to to kind of affect some sort of change, you know. Um, so, we'll see. I'd like to see how this rolls out and see if there's other competitors. And didn't they say they're open sourcing this as well? Did I catch that? Yes, I think I think that was one of his points that he was trying to make. It wasn't just, "Hey, we want to make all of the devices and all, Please, all the technology." Go make this. Go make this and make it better, and so yeah. we can all benefit. I and I think that's really cool too. You know, for some yeah. kind of very altruistic, scary, and you're wondering where's the thing that turns it into a, a mind control device like on Doctor Who. You guys watch that one, right? 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 Anybody? I hope somebody in the chat room out there is laughing. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't watch you. I'm sorry. Crickets. Crickets. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Let's okay. Let's bring it down a little. Speaking of Meerkat and Periscope, both in the news this week. Periscope made it easy to watch the Mayweather Pacquiao fight for free. I love this. Um, but uh, <laughs> hey, I and mean, apparently you were kind of sore if you paid a hundred bucks for this thing. So um, I didn't watch. I didn't watch any of it. The free or the uh, uh, legal or illegal streams. I didn't even know what. I don't even know who won. You know. Um, I can just keep hearing about how Floyd Mayweather is a really, really horrible person towards women. Um, and maybe I shouldn't watch pro wrestling because of it, which is a weird conversation that they'd be reading about. Um, but that's not for this show. Uh, but, but this has been, this has been an ongoing conversation, you know, with MLB, uh, from what I understand, uh, where we're talking, who was it? Was it Doug or Crappy? I was talking with about that. I think it was Doug actually. Mm-hmm. Um, those, those talking about, Oh, but Hey, I don't want to forget this. Uh, congratulations. Nine years of, should I drink that? 
I, I, I saw the messages and I want, I want to make sure I don't miss that at the end of the show here. Uh, so check out shouldidrinkthat.com. He's, uh, I think he's in the process of kind of rebooting the show here for the summer um, in kind of a new format. I know he's been experimenting a lot with Google Hangout and everything and do some great things over there. You know, uh, I don't so. understand why we keep having him on our show, but he never has us on his show. You know, he, he's protecting your liver. Oh yeah, that's true too. He's, he's looking out for you. Better. Listen, listen. I spent one. I spent one evening with him and his his former co-hosts, and I almost didn't survive. So, I, I mean, I, yeah, I think they really are. I think we were supposed to go film a show that night, but we were too drunk to. So yeah, it, things things happen. But anyway, I'm just telling Doug we called him out an awesome cast. We did. Just we did. Him. We did. He might be watching us on Chromecast right now. Hi, Doug. Anyways, um, but no, this is going to be an ongoing conversation, and and I think MLB came out and said, yeah, we're not going to be able to stop this, and we're not going to enforce well, and, it. And if if you're if you're paying for that fight, you're paying for it for the quality for the commentary, right, right, right. That and, until they can, it, and probably a, a fight like this where someone's ringside is is probably the best use case for something like Periscope. I can't imagine watching someone's periscope sitting up in the, in the top row of the outfield, right, right, for, for an entire baseball yeah. game to to try to catch up on that, or even I mean, I, I just don't see it see it working in a lot of different things. It but seems the thing, like a boxing the, the, match or a wrestling match would be your your best case scenario. Imagine watching a hockey game from one perspective oh, or watching oh, a, you need, a I need an HD. Game. I need HD to make sense of hockey in the first place. You're like, where's the puck? <laughs> yeah. Well, but it's it also think about the camera angles, right? Mm -hmm. You're, you're getting one perspective. You're going to lose the puck in two of the corners more than likely. You, like I, I back to it, pretty much a fight or a wrestling match is probably your best use case. For something hey, like hey, hey, don't give it go give my clients any ideas. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I think I, I don't think any sport most of the major sports are not gonna have to worry and, about this. And even for me, like we've really kind of enforced we have a thing at the beginning of our shows for the wrestling groups that say, you know, hey, no filming of this event without the written permission of Silvertron Media, IWC, RWA, whatever it is. And I'm really thinking about, because we've really kind of enforced that. And and I, I, I try and kind of, I don't care if you're filming, but I, I have a problem if you're sitting there during the main event of the biggest guy we've had in the company uh, period. And uh, you're sitting there with your camera up the entire match filming it for five minutes. I have a problem with that. Right. Yeah. I like that's the kind of thing. But again, I, you know, and even Periscope, I'm kind of iffy on. Um, part of me wants to say, you know, get out there. These guys need publicity. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. somebody told me that that an event was up on a message board and had been downloaded 600 times and definitely did not sell 600 copies of that thing. Um, I look at that as like, great, 600 people know what this thing is and hopefully they'll buy it next time if they really liked it. Like yeah. that's my attitude toward that. I've had this discussion with some of the people that I do, that I partner with. And it's like, they're like, well, well, I, I should get, you know, 600 times whatever that is, you know, that's owed to me. I'm like, no, those people weren't going to buy it, period. You know, you, you did not lose anything in, in that case. Um, See, I would be worried more about people taking Periscope and pointing it at their TV mm -hmm. right, for right. a sporting event that was blacked out right, in right. specific locations or something along those lines. I... What I haven't seen yet, and I'm surprised we haven't seen any of the conversation around this yet, is I don't know if you if you know how much you're into Periscope, but you can privately share a Periscope video um, to just a specific group huh. of people. And one of the big proponents of any sort of technology or internet is the porn industry. Right. And I'm not sure if people have taken advantage of that in that particular industry yet of, okay, I will include you in on my periscope of me doing whatever with whoever, you know, what, and charge you. And I've not, it's a good business opportunity. Yeah. I mean, if, <laughs> Hey, if you haven't thought of this yet, you need to do this I mean, this is and let me know how it works out. And, and that's one of me. the first things that's one of the first things I thought Google hangout, not exactly porn exactly, mm -hmm. but it's saying like have a little bit of a pay window. Like you pay me here and we let you into you the webinar. You pay me something money. I will eat pizza all day long. Like, 
why I mean you could pretty much turn any of this into some sort of adventure and yeah yeah and I know as far as like at the arena and things we have not discussed Periscope at all as far as but I gotta say the penguins though mm-hmm. are one of and they got mentioned on one of the other one of the other shows I listened to of like hey the penguins are doing this you mm-hmm. know and it's like and I've noticed I get notifications from the penguins all the time mm-hmm. they're doing it all the time WB is doing it all the mm-hmm. time and it's behind the scenes I, WB was doing it from. They did a after the after Raw last night. They had a, a appreciation night for Pat Patterson, and they and you saw Triple H, the COO of the company, with the periscope. You're looking at somebody's feet at first, for, first of all, <laughs> and then like they're going out a gorilla position out, and they're they're seeing the fans going down the, the aisle, and and uh, or even like you know live from the live events where they don't have any cameras out there, you know, that you're not going to see unless you're there in whatever mm-hmm. town, right? Uh, they're using, I, I and mean, I love that. I love that aspect and that behind the scenes kind of look at it. Um, but, uh, but no, I, yeah, I don't think any of this is really worrisome, you know, um, I, you know, the only thing that really misses out is, you know, for the events that I do is, well, you got to see, you know, you, you, you did or didn't get to see that happen. That person winning at that moment. Right. What you're going to see later that night, all the results anyways, you know, what are you really missing out on? And did you really lose a ticket by doing that? You know, pens are selling out the arena that they have no problem packing, packing people in. Um, If I was anyone, maybe root sports might Mm -hmm. get upset. Right, because right, because they're well, don't. and in their mindset is we got the rights to this. Why is anybody else watching this without our permission? You know, that's right. how the contract is written, and it's not really made for this this era, right? Uh, and and you know, again, if somebody periscopes the ent- my entire show on Saturday night, uh, with with IWC say, and and it's like, well, I mean, really, did they get a lot out of that? The guy doing this and following all these flippy moves and everything, and this four way dance and everything's going on. This guy's the cameraman. He hasn't been doing it as long as I have, right? Uh, if they really want it, they want to see that match or make sure they didn't miss anything and get Joe Dombrowski, get Joe Dombrowski and maybe Mark Madden's there that night or something, get their commentary on top of everything and get the full polished package, they're going to pay for it, you know? Right. I mean, the only time I get angry is when somebody took some raw footage of mine one time and put it on their own website to show their match off. And this is like before I've had to edit it. I had scratchy graphics from some of the stuff that we do live that is fine for that big screen, you know, and that low quality. But for what I do for the DVD, we're going to freshen it up a little bit. That's what pissed me off, you know, mm-hmm. not dude with a camera doing this so much. Because I'm like, well, who's really if you're if you are got your bit out of it by watching that, you weren't going to buy the DVD anyways. And I'm looking for actual potential customers in this. So. Oh, that's my thought as a content creator. <laughs> you know what? It's funny the 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 fight. It reminded me of um, whenever we used to. This is yeah, this is horrible. You know the bad things we do. Um, whenever we'd watch, I remember watching Tyson and, and Holyfield on somebody else's cable box because we didn't pay for the pay per view, and that's what uh, my, it reminded me. My uncle had a scrambler on a satellite <laughs> yeah, dish. Yeah, we and you know apparently I wasn't the liked uh, nephew because my other cousin got to go over and watch all the time. So. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what it kind of remind me of with people rebroadcasting it um, on their Periscope feeds and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, just it's yeah. like it's like it's like tuning in that channel on the cable when the pay per views on you can hear the audio but it's a scrambled picture <laughs> that apparently a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. I, I've done that visiting my my grandparents with their cable back in the eighties but um, yeah it, it's that kind of thing I mean you're not missing out on that you did know? you see uh, he, Manny Pac well um, uh, Manny Pac's getting sued. Uh, he's a, he had a sh- shoulder injury that he didn't disclose. So they're suing him for five million dollars on behalf of um, different organizations and boxing fans. Because Probably they, the, uh, mm-hmm. the 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 bookies. Yeah, because <laughs> mm-hmm. if the bookies knew it, there would be different odds. And, it's amazing. <laughs> and different money would be paid out for for one thing. So I don't know. A lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, boxing. I, <laughs> They're trying so hard to resurrect it. I mean, mm-hmm. just like they did in recent years with hockey, except they were very successful with with uh, with, with hockey. So, and I also wonder how much money they're losing when the Penguins go out of, out the first round of the playoffs, because <laughs> that seems to be America's team. So, uh, in general, I don't know anybody else that's other than the Red Wings, of course. But still, um, on that note, uh, oh, also Meerkat. It's uh, one. Is the beta is out. If you want to try it out on Android, I, I think it's downloaded to my Nexus, but I haven't tried it out yet. I think it's still a little buggy. It's beta, of course. Um, but they're also adding Facebook support as it's moving away from Twitter. Makes sense, okay. Um, so, so I don't. For- I don't feel like I don't feel like Facebook is my real time go to though. That that's going to be a hard sell. I'm with you on that, but I'm the one that embeds, thanks to after a conversation I had with Doug, that you can embed a live hangout into a post. 
on the Facebooks. Um, you know, I'm kind of interested in that. And I, I did uh, during the conference, uh, lifestyle medicine conference, I was working covering uh, for for a client on um, Friday. I'm actually going to get to do this in a, a few more weeks in Greensburg for Sisters of Charity. Apparently, um, I was periscoping several sessions just to you know get it out there, see if anybody pops in and stuff like that. You know, and 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 people. People found it, you know, but I think more hashtags than anything. I don't think it's actually our audience popping in on that. So, um, but no, I'm with you. I'm with you. It depends on what it is. If I'm periscoping myself, like my family, I get every notification. And there might be somebody out there that has me on their list, their close friends list or something, and they get every notification. So they're going to get that. Mm -hmm. And also it's a platform to support that back end, right? Because right now you have to go to an application you know to, to use it and if i can do all the interactions in a browser via facebook i'm all for it so and i'll give them a heads up, heads up and a big platform to support them um that periscope doesn't i bet you if they do this and this this starts this gets any traction they're going to be facebook's within within two years uh half a million no half a billion i'm going half a billion on this one <laughs> going half a billion it's not it's not gonna be instagram but still i think it's gonna be very very significant stuff coming up guys um of course tedx pittsburgh we're talking with uh one of the co-organizers on awesome chat this week a lot of cool stuff if you have any questions about clamor i've been talking about it a lot on the other podcast at sorgatron.com for instance uh so go look at some of that and some of my ideas and actually uh, a few write-ups for the newsletter as well over there um if you have questions about the app it's an 18 second app um you can sample news bits podcasts we use it to just kind of sample all the shows on sorgatron media so look up sorgatron media on there to check out how we're using it but there's all all kinds of uh, interesting uses um original content i have this idea of you read a little bit of your blog and link over to the blog um but worth checking out it's kind of in a beta state right now but has a lot of people really involved with it uh, but if you have any questions about it as a blogger podcaster uh etc please send them over to me at sorgatron on the twitter or um or uh, uh, uh awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and i'll try to bring them up there when we have somebody on the line from uh clamor to discuss that that's actually going to be thursday morning about 10 a.m eastern again look for the i will probably stream it some other way because i think we're going to do it on hangouts because that's the first not pittsburgh person i have involved in that mini awesome cast is going strong of course we just started a new video game daily show um and we're going to try to uh get more interaction from our our co-hosts here i'm going to hit them with stories at seven in the morning and we're going to see what we can get some commentary in there so it's just not my opinions about video games wrestling you know uh technology etc so um also please check out tedx pittsburgh in general tedx pittsburgh.org uh, they're coming up on May 23rd. Tickets are on sale now. I was under the understanding they have a very limited number of tickets. So if you're going to get in on that, please do so. Um, I will be hosting. You know, I think I'm going to host a streaming party for TEDx Pittsburgh. So if you guys want to come over and watch it with me, <laughs> I think that's how I'm going to roll with this one. And eh, it's a good idea, you know. Um, but uh, I'll be on the Twitters all around that. Uh, Google I.O. May 28th and 29th. Look out for that. See what everybody's getting for free underneath their seats that you will never get to. WWDC July uh, June 9th. Like, Chilla, did you write this? The epicenter of change. Well, that's what I told you. No, we went over this three episodes ago. That's what they're calling it. I don't remember what I did 10 minutes ago on this show. <laughs> Create Festival, June 10th through 12th here in Pittsburgh. Work Camp, Colum Work Camp Columbus, July 17th through 19th. Camps, how about Pod Camp Pittsburgh is officially August 15th and 16th. Um, what? what? That's, is that on the run now? That, yeah, that's, that's, that's not on the rundown. That's off of my headpiece because the email finally went out yesterday. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Uh, somebody's not on the newsletter um but uh please i will a lot of fun stuff it's the 10th anniversary i think we i don't think anybody's hit 10 um we were the second pod camp and um i'm, I'm really really glad to be proud the list of names if we get everybody <laughs> that we're aiming for is going to be tremendous um I'll, I'll just leave it at that oh um this is something that we have not announced Evening with PodCamp is returning. It's going to be at our friends at the hardware store. I think the date is May 27th. We're going to have Crystal O'Connor from Libsyn. I'm going to have a sit down with her to talk about podcasting. Very nice. 
I need to use more. I need to use lips and more for my podcast, but no, I do use it for my clients though. Um, but anyways, uh, the ones where I actually have a budget. So, um, but a great service. You should check them out, of course, as well. We should get them on an awesome chat as well. Uh, what else is going on? Sorgatron Media, Creators Newsletter, Sorgatron.com, and of course, many awesome casts. I'm talking about all kinds of talking about HoloLens. Talked about a little HoloLens there last week. Although apparently the people that used it are less than thrilled than I am from the mm-hmm. demo. So that's been an interesting situation going on there. Chilla, what's going on with you? Not not too much. I'll be heading to Philly for the weekend for uh, Wizard World Comic Con. So looking forward to that. Um, and I will be Periscope back. Periscope the heck out of it. Yeah. <laughs> we I will be back in Studio A next week. Nice, nice. We should hook you up as a uh, correspondent for the panel riot. Oh, definitely. So we'll, we'll hook you up. If we. By the way, I, I, I got to throw this over on the other one, but... Um, Hot Wheels RWA is on Meerkat. He's Meerkatting watching us. Whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I'll try to pull that up. Uh, Dutters, what's going on with you? A uh, little, little calmer now, um, I think. You're, you're recovering from, uh, from the schoolness. Yeah, yeah. I, I still will be doing uh, things at the school communication for Point Park over the summer with our social media. So I'm going to be incorporating some of the fun things we talk to and trying to get... Um, some of my um, social media friends involved with some projects in my head that I've already kind of picked your brain with, Sorg, but I think we're going to make some of these things happen. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, you're going to have to remind me. Yeah, I know. He doesn't pay <laughs> so many to me. pitches in my head right now. <laughs> well, I, I was just challenged to a pizza off by Uncle Crappy. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm not sure what I that saw is. you discussing the uh, the pizza podcast idea on mm-hmm. Twitter during the show. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, um, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to have a pizza eating contest or some sort of pizza art contest or sort of pizza tool use contest. Mm. I'm in. I mean. <laughs> pizza, see? Mm. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And, of course, check everything out at awesomecast.net. Uh, you can, uh, again, join us live at awesomecast.com every uh, Tuesday night about 8 p.m. Eastern time. No, 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Uh, awesome cast on the Twitters, on the um, um, not the Instagrams, um, on the Facebook, a great Facebook group over there under the Awesome Cast, and uh, and so much more. There's so oh, I gotta log in in order to watch Meerkat. Are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to get it on the right computer. I, uh, but uh, thank you to everybody uh, joining us and jumping in on the chat. You've been our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.